departed thence and escaped to the cave Abdullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard, heard it, they went down teacher to him. Next verse. And everyone that was in distress, listen to me now. Please, I want you to pay attention to this. If you miss this, you have missed everything. Praise God. Please don't miss it. Tell your neighbor I will not miss it. The Bible said, okay, now it said, everyone that was in what? Say it. And everyone that was in what? And everyone that was gathered themselves unto David. And he became a captain over them. And there were with him about 400 men. Hallelujah. Who knows what a cave is? You know, I was doing a study yesterday and I had to check um, the, the meaning of a cave. And I found out, they said, um, I, and, I've, and I typed the disadvantages of a cave. And this is what I got. I got... Um, Caves, caves dwelling, lack light, have poor ventilation, and are often associated with poverty. Ah. You know, David was running away from Saul. Hallelujah. So he came to hide in a cave. And when he came to the cave, please pay very much attention to me. When he came to hide in the cave, his brethren heard that he was there. And they went there to meet him. Before now, David had already been anointed a king by Samuel. But David was in a distressed place. He was in a poverty-stricken place. He was in the cave. No man survives in the cave. It's only men that don't have shelter, that don't have a roof over their head, that goes into cave. You don't pay her strength in cave. Hallelujah. And the cave is not just meant for... The cave is meant for anybody or anything or any animal. Snakes are in the cave. Scorpions are there. Dragons or whatever you think. Any animal or insect are there. You can be sleeping in the cave and something is rolling past you because it's the house for everybody. Because nobody is paying rent. So it's the least place any man can find himself is in the cave. But now this is where David, a man anointed a king. That is where he is. You see how that you can be, words can be spoken into you from God. A man of God can come and tell you, by this time next year, you will become a billionaire. Next year come, you are still poorer than you were last year. It is in the cave of Abdullam that discoveries are made. A man of God can tell you as a girl, you are getting married next year. Next year will come and pass. You will not see get married. Why? Because you did not find yourself in this cave. Every man that has prophecy hanging on his head must find himself in the cave of Abdullam. The cave of Abdullam is a, is a place where you come to get your eyes opened. To see the reality of what God's word has said. To, see, to know how to go about what God has said. Now, there are two things to, be, to consider when God speaks. First of all, what has God said? Second of all, what do I do to bring to pass that which God has told me? If you only heard what God said and you began to run with that, you might even miss it. But you would have to seek God's presence. You would have to seek God to know what he's saying concerning that which he told you. Pastor Chris said something. He said, be careful. When God speaks to you, be careful to know what God is not saying from what he said. Because understanding what God said from the wrong standpoint, you might be thinking you are getting it right, but at the end of the day, you are already missing it. Hallelujah. So the cave of Adolam, everybody, every serious Christian, the reason why I said serious Christian, those who want to go find God, and every single member of church should be a serious Christian. There should be not the, the things of God is not meant for pastors. Each and every one of us, we are, we are priests according to the book of Revelation 5:10. The Bible said that we are made kings and priests unto God, and we are going to reign here on earth. Let me tell you, in heaven there is no prayer point. 
in heaven there is no witches die by fire I'm not sure if I heard this song joy 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 heaven is full of there is no no sorrow no malice no bends everybody is just okay hallelujah so when where you should reign is not heaven there is no space for reigning there for you the, the, only, the only way there can be a space for you to reign up there is only when you do what you ought to do on earth when you reign on earth well here you will reign in heaven people like the Abraham now they are occupying a high throne in heaven why because when they were on earth they allowed themselves to be used by God they allowed God influenced territories through them, through them. so they reign here through God so when they travel to heaven when they went to heaven they also reigned hallelujah Abraham reigned so much on the earth to so the essence that Abraham had his own heaven they called who knows Abraham's heaven well, who knows the name of Abraham's heaven Abraham's heaven is Abraham's bosom. That is where everybody went before Jesus Christ came into the scene. So anybody that existed during the time of Abraham and after him, before Jesus Christ came, when they finished their assignment on earth here, they went to Abraham's heaven. So a man reigned so much on earth to the extent that he now had to, God now had to pave a paradise for him in eternity before Jesus Christ came into the scene and passed Hallelujah. So the cave of Adolam, so many Christians, when they are faced with difficulties, they begin to complain. Father, say you said to me that this will happen next year. But you, my pastor has never missed it before. And it was very clear. And what he said was confirmed by three other men of God. But why is it that I, I'm, I'm not becoming that which you have said I will become? It's because you have not had an encounter with the cave of Adolam. You know, David was living his life as a shepherd boy. Everything was fine. He killed the bear effortlessly. He killed the lion effortlessly. It was when the anointing to become a king came upon David. That is where, that is when David's terror started. Problem starts. Problem starts. I've said this several times here, and I'm going to keep saying it. David, come. Your name is David Self for that matter. If God has not anointed this man to become anything in life, the devil would have no time for him. He can press. He can do what? He can press well. And clients will pay. And God will have no business with him. The devil will have no business with him. He can do whatever he chooses. And he will succeed in it. He would even sleep and he will, he will have no bad dream. Things will go smoothly. But the day anointing comes upon him, the day mantle comes upon his life, that will be the day the devil becomes interested in him. That will be the day the devil will say, Ah, ah, finally, you don't start. Okay, let me start my work in your life. Hallelujah. All the time that David was doing all of, if the devil knew David was going to become a king, let me tell you, don't think the devil knows things. The devil doesn't know anything. The devil only knows because you allowed him to know. You know, that time you were complaining, that is why it is good that we speak in tongues. Thank you. Because when you speak in tongues, the enemy, the devil is confused. Hallelujah. Some of us, when we complain, that is the only time we tell the devil what we are going through. So the devil will capitalize on our complaint. Oh God, this thing don't tire me. When you, let me tell you, we are in a generation where things rise and fall. This because the system of this world is destined to fail. Only men of capacity, only men of stature in the in the spirit, huh, can build a system that that will not depend on the systems of the world to survive. Okay, look at it. There are men who you are who you were hearing their voice five years ago. You no longer hear their voice today. Did you know why? Because naturally, men's voice are meant to sound for a time and go down again. There are people, there are artists that were popular before. 
Are they still popular till now? That is the system of the world. The system of the world is meant to rise and to fall. There are people that, your, that, that, that are your friends. You know them to be very rich. They press this thing and they got something out of it. They bought themselves Benz. But now they have sold the Benz and they are trekking. Huh? They were living very large. They were, in fact, their home became hotel. They were paying hotel bill monthly. In fact, the hotel has already allocated for them a room. So whenever they come, they give them the room key. So that, is, that becomes their house and they are paying monthly hundreds of thousands. But a time came, they are looking for who to squat with. Why? Because the system of this world is destined to rise and to fall. If you do not yet understand this, I'm not, I'm not only talking about those who are in the world, though, both for Christians. There are some gospel artists they, that were reigning before. They were reigning. There are songs everywhere. But now it's as though they have faced the way. Why? You can even be a spiritual man, but you, are, you tap into the system of the world. See, the same thing will happen to you. If you are a spiritual man, as long as you are making do with the world system and you have not taken time to build structure for yourself, a system that will not depend on the system of the world to survive, you will still go up and come down. The men whose voice never go down are men who have taken time to find themselves in the cave of Adullam. They found themselves in the cave of Adullam and they, 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 they built a system around them that will never make their voice go down. So they will keep raining for seasons after seasons. Seasons after seasons, they will keep raining. Why? Because they have taken time to build capacity and they, and they, they, generated, they generated fire. They built for themselves structure, spiritual structure that we uphold them high and we keep them at the top for as long as they live. The reason why men rise and the reason why men fall is because they don't know what is obtainable. They don't know how to, how to be consistent. They don't know how to maintain the heights they have been able to sustain and um, to attain. Let me tell you, climbing to the top is not a big deal. I remember the first time one million entered my account. Hey! Jesus. No. Immediately money entered my account. Pew! The zero became too much. The zero became what? I couldn't finish counting the zeros. I was in, I was counting. One, two. Even when I finished counting the zero, it look as if the zero continue. I said, this zero, no, they finish. Hey! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, ah! You know, they finish. Someone say poverty. Very bad thing. This is something that people use in they, they go to a club and they just spend it effortlessly and they, no, no, no shakements. Hallelujah. This is something that they give people for transport. They take transport. Huh? Thanks for coming. Take. Thanks for coming. God bless you. Come back again. That's what I'm looking at as if some of us, 900 can tell our accounts. There will be a way we will worship God in this service. There is a way we will give God. There is a way strength from nowhere. If you were in the sick bed and they say you have malaria plus, let's assume it's malaria plus plus. All of a sudden, you look at your account, you say, why? 10 million. Malaria go fly. The way you walk out of that hospital, you walk out like a bulldozer. Say, malaria, what is the worry? Malaria decrease. All of a sudden, strength from nowhere will envelop you. Why? Somebody say, the cave of Adolam. I'm trying to explain what this cave means and what it is. So when I start diving into the depths of it, you would understand what I'm talking about. Do not see yourself as one. Don't say God has abandoned you in any way. Don't think God doesn't hear you. Let me tell you, there is a time as a Christian that when you tell God, Limana Kwatia Show, God will talk to you. My daughter, my son, hear you the word of the Lord. You ask God, Father, should I go and visit my friend? 
Oh, I should not go and visit my friend. You say, don't go. Ah! It, it, it looks as though you are, in fact, you are on top of the world. In fact, somebody might be praying, somebody might be going through issues. You tell your friend, pray to God and ask him now. Ask him, I don't know what is wrong with you, bro. Ask him, he will talk to you. Go on a fast, two days. He will, God will speak. I don't know how people serve God. God speaks to me. God speaks. He's a God that talks. Eh? Shut down everything. Switch off your phone. Face God. Focus. He's going to speak to you. My friend, stay one place. Gak. You never enter cave. When you enter cave, Adulam, you will fast for seven days dry. God will not say, Pem. That time you will know. Say kaki, no be leather. Na pomo ibi. You know, there are so many Christians, they have become the general overseer of God. So they can tell you how God operates. But the operations of God is diverse. Diverse kind of operations. Hallelujah. Pastors, rise. And they fall. When I say fall, I don't mean they fell from being a pastor. No. Their voice at the time was heard. You would bear me witness that 10 years ago, there was a particular pastor that his voice was heard everywhere. Nine years ago, there was a particular pastor everywhere in their voice. Two years ago, there was a particular pastor that his voice. And even now, there was a particular man of God, his voice is everywhere. Men of God, if they will not take time to build spiritual structure that will last, that will not depend on the system of the world, their voice will still go down. Gospel actors, they come, they reign, and they go down. <laughs> Something just came into my mind now. Right, so this is the fit that is writing. What is obtainable in the cave of Adolam? In the cave of Adolam, you meet with isolation. You meet with what? You are isolated from the world. You are isolated from the world. You are separated from friends. You are separated unto God. The silence of God, don't think it's, it's even in the silence of God is something. Silence means consent, right? So even when God is silent, there is something he's saying in his silence. It is only men that understands the ways of God that will not take for granted the silence of God. It's only men that understand the ways of God that will know that even though God is silent, there is something he's saying in his silence. Hallelujah. Some of us, when God is, Father, is he the man? God is doing like this. Father, should I marry this man? Is he my husband? You will now assume that the silence of God means go and marry. You will die away. Hallelujah. You will now assume that the reason why God is quiet. Maybe God is saying I should go ahead. God is not deaf and dumb. Do you know why you are not an investor? God created you and put sense for you to understand that when he is not talking to you, you should press deep, you should press more. You should seek for counsel. You should know what he's saying. There's always what God is saying. If God ever has ever spoken to you once, about anything the cave of Abdullah is to come and understand the ways or what to do to cause what God has said to come to pass in your life if God has ever spoken to you there is something called vision and mission there must be a mission to every vision if what God showed you is only vision and God did not tell you the mission please don't move if God told you that you are going to become a pastor for example, and God did not reveal to you the mission behind the vision. Don't go and open church. 
If God told you that you are going to become a billionaire, don't go and start up a business if God has not shown you the type of business to start. Hallelujah. There must be a mission attached to the vision. Men who fail in life, they fail because what they did was that they were running with vision. Not like it is wrong. But mission is a time. God will not tell you, okay, at so, so, so and so time, you should begin to run with this mission. Okay, I have told you, you are going to open up a ministry. Okay, wait and tarry. Go and serve there first for some time. Then after this time, then so, so and so year, you can now start. Start with this. Start in this area. Open the church there. You should, you, there should be a formation that you follow. So when God has spoken to you once, there should be a place of a counter where you go and wait on him and ask him, Father, what have you really, what, how, what do I do? How do I make this happen? What do I do to buy this thing? God told you you are going to buy a big house. You just said amen. Father, what do I do to buy this house? There is a man. His name is Clifford Dollar. He was a young preacher and there was a house that is up for, for sale. A white woman wants to sell a big house. And he was trekking. And he saw the house for sale. He went to meet the white woman and he said, how much is the house? The white woman looked at him. You small boy, small black rat. Come on, get out of here. You can't afford this house. Get out of here. And he said, God. She, he felt so ashamed. So he went home. He said, God, I want to buy this house. And God said, Great for a dollar. I have given you the house. Buy it. Do what? Where the money did. He now went to ask God, Father, how do I buy this house? Buy it is a vision. How do I is now the mission. Hallelujah. And God now had to reveal the way to buy. Now, some of you have been praying for a, for a life partner. Father, I want to get married. Father, I want to get married. It is in the cave of Adulam that you will press and press and God will tell you, go to ShopRite on Saturday afternoon by 12. Make sure you are seated before 12.30. So go and sit down in Redina, the back seat of Redina. God will specifically tell you for the, the location where the guy will come. Now, God telling you you are going to settle down is a vision, yeah. But there is a mission behind that vision. If you don't, if you don't follow the mission, the thing that God said might even bring death upon you. The Bible said in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 6, it said the letter kill it, but the spirit give it life. The, so, if you take what God has said, yes, it's fine. But that which God has said, if you don't work upon it, it will be assumed to be letter. And letter will kill. Job said, as it was in the days of my youth, go there. The book of Job chapter 29 from verse 4. As it was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. As it is in the days of my youth. Now Job was already old. But it was in the days of his youth that he was able to press and press into God to discover some secrets about him that made him the richest man in the East. I think I'm not sure you people heard what I said. Did you, did you hear me? God does not reveal secret things in the open. When God wants to reveal secret things, it depends on men to hide themselves in the secrets. So when God wants to reveal something to you that is secret, God is a secret person. Hey. If, if every time you wake up in the morning you see God and you give God a handshake back, 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 back you will not respect Him you will see God finish you, don't, you wake up in the morning and say oh boy God, come but God, I'm fine huh? but I won't come out too I've been huh? we'll, we'll, see, we'll, we'll, see later, we'll see later if God is always in the open none of us will value God but God always hides Himself in the secret The Bible said in the book of Exodus, chapter 18. I, oh, that, I think it is. Let me, let, let me show you something. Go to the book of Exodus. I think it is 22. Hey, 
God like hiding himself. See, God hides in, in darkness. Some people say, yeah, what is pastor saying? Eh? God is hiding in darkness. Ha, 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 ha. Ha. 20 verse 21. Exodus 20, 21. God likes to hide in a place where people cannot see him. That is why we are all looking for God. Because God wants you to look for him. God wants you to find him. The Bible said, and the people stood afar off. Huh? And the Moses drew near unto the thick. The Bible did not, didn't say darkness. Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where who was. God was there so that people will not see him. So that it, it will not bring see finish. Hallelujah. So if you really want to see God, it is, it's supposed to be a personal thing. So you should go to a place, a cave. Ca cave is dark. That is why whenever I'm praying in my house, I off my lights. I don't want disturbance. So I can press deep and deep and deep and deep and God will begin to reveal some things. If you are here, you don't have secret place. The only, your only prayer is in the open. Every time you, the only prayer is only when pastors say, that let us pray. That's only when you pray. You don't have a time for yourself when you say, Father, Lekoto Brakata. Only you. You are not yet a Christian. You never become Christian yet. If you do not have a secret place, it is the place of the secret that defines our life as Christians. That defines our consecration unto God. Not the open. The Bible said, He that seeth your work in the secret shall do what? Shall reward you in the open. Right? So God depends on your secret life to reward you in the open. That means a man that does not have a secret life, there is no reward for him in the open. Because it is a secret doing that brings us reward in the open. So God is waiting for the day you will become a secret man because God will only meet men in the place of the secret because him himself is a secret God. He is a secret God. So when God sees that you are pressing and pressing, God will say, ah, there are things this man wants to know about me. Okay, let me review something about myself to this man. When the secret of God was upon my tabernacle, Job was, Job was telling people, when I was young, now I'm old, maybe, but when I'm young, they will say, where I seek God? They will say, why I hide myself? To understand what God is saying to me for a generation over territory I became a ruler not because I'm rich or I'm big but I depend on the secrets of God to become what I am today there must be something that God has told you that nobody knows if God is a secret God and there are things about God you don't know there should be something. Your life should be a mystery to other people. People should be asking, how is this guy doing this thing? How is he able to do this thing like this? Who they give us strength? Who they give us stamina? How come he was able to accomplish this thing in, short, in just a short while? People should be able. But the reason why it's not like that is because you are not a secret person. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, Psalm 91 1, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It is always secret. It is always secret. It is always secret. The Bible said in the book of James, chapter 5, from verse 16 downward, the Bible said, The way Elijah prayed for rain to fall, the Elijah did not say, Oh, for the past three years and six months, when you have not fallen, because I said you should not fall. Okay, rain. Aya, begin to fall now. For we Before Elijah, the Tishabite, in the book of First Kings 17, before Elijah should, could come to Ahab and tell Ahab, it will not rain on the earth by my word for three years. And by my word, it's not even called the years. He said, it will not rain by my word. He must have done something in the secret. When Elijah called down fire to fall down, when he was when he was talking to God in the presence of everybody, what did he say? He said, Father, I have done according to thy word. Where did he get that word from? He got that word from the secret. 
have done according to thy word. In the book of John, in the book of John 11 from verse 1, Jesus Christ was face to face with the tomb of Lazarus. What did Jesus Christ say? He said, Father, thank you for thou hast heard me already. Meaning the guy don't already pray in the secret. Don't try to start casting out devils and demons in the open when you have not done your secret work. Don't come outside and begin to shout. That is why I've always said this. If there is a witch or a, a witch doctor in your compound or an more or a juju priest or an igwe woman or somebody you are, you, you are suspecting is a witch because she does or he does some witchcraft operation. Please mind the way you behave if you are not a prayerful person. Don't go and challenge the person. Don't go and tell the person, my God is a big God. My God will deal with you. The person will deal with you. God will quiet. Because God has looked at you, you do not have a secret life. Because God depends on your secret life to be big in you. The bigness of God is not, is not dependent on your word. The bigness of God is dependent on your secret life. Is dependent on this cave of Adullam. How many times do you visit that cave? When God, when what God has said is not properly understood, it will bring pain. Ah, you are going to get married in the next six months. Six months come pass. No, no guy even do you. No guy even tell you, say, baby, you are fine. No. Can I take you out to at least to shop? If not, you not meet by yourself. Fine girl, you are very fine. No. Huh? Six months pass. And you know that, this, that, that your pastor doesn't see things, doesn't say things he had not seen. It is very possible for God to declare his counsel. And yet his counsel did not come to pass. It is very much possible for God to declare his counsel and yet the counsel of God did not come to pass. And the reason why the counsel of God will not come to pass is because men has failed to drive themselves into the secret place. I don't... John the Baptist, the Bible said, who was John the Baptist? He says, a voice crying in the wilderness, make straight the way, right? He should prophesy from the wilderness. But John the Baptist entered city and prophesied. So the voice of God came to him. Who knows Balak and Balaam? God told Balaam, don't go. Don't what? Balak called Balaam, come and curse me, the children of Israel. But adventure, when you curse them, they, might, they will start dying. And Balaam said, okay, I'm coming. Let me come and curse them. And he went to ask God, See what Balaam said I should come and do. See what Balaam said I should come and do. I should come and curse some people for him. He said, Balaam, come and curse me, Balak. I mean, Balaam, Balak, God, Balaam, come and curse me, the children of Israel. And Balaam went to God and prayed, Father, should I, should I, should I curse them? And God said, don't go. He said to them, I will not come. If you have prayed to God and God said, no, you pray to him again, he said, no, about that same matter. If you keep pressing and praying, he will say yes. Even when it will kill you. If God said, don't travel, you not beg him, but I want to travel now. He said, don't travel. And you keep begging him to travel, he will say, I yeah, travel. Even if there is accident on the way, he will not preserve you. It will happen and you will die. So Balaam did not understand what God has told him from the secret. So he misunderstood God. So the same God that said go is the same God that stood on the way to strike him dead, to kill him. That was where a donkey spoke. How many of you know a donkey spoke in the Bible? The donkey had to speak. Say, guy, why they flog me like this now? I they save your life for you, they flog me. I they try to preserve you, you they flog me. Now once Balak shocked. So a donkey at that time, you can imagine, a man who has missed God, is a donkey supposed to speak? 
But when you begin to miss God, huh, the things that should be obtainable through you will no longer be. Balaam was supposed to be the one to see the angel, the adversary standing on the way. But because he has missed it, he did not see it. A Okoro donkey, donkey. A donkey was not the one that saw vision of the angel standing with a, with a drawn sword. And the, angel, and the donkey did not go again. The donkey had to speak to Balaam and say, Guy, there is an angel there and he saved your life since so stop, stop striking me. One day you, you have refused to hear the voice of God. You have refused to do what God is saying. It is that your shiwawa in your house that we prophesy to you. It is that your shiwawa that you are carrying about. God has told you, don't go to that guy's house. Don't go. Don't go. Because it's straight to here. Shiwawa that should not prophesy. You will carry shiwawa and you are going. Shiwawa will turn and look you. You know the year say God, say me you go. Come and go back to the house. You, and you will be so shocked. Why? Why would a donkey prophesy in the place of a prophet? It's an error. Don't allow an animal to prophesy in your place. Do not allow an animal to see vision in your place. It is an error. It's a place of isolation. It is also a place of humbling. When you find yourself in the cave of Adullam, you will humble yourself. You know what I just said earlier on? People who said, I hear from God. Pray to God. Switch off your phone. Lock yourself in the house. Spend at least a day and pray. You will hear. God speaks to me back to back. When they find themselves in the cave of Adullam, they will be humbled. They will know it's not all the time God speaks back to back. They will not humble themselves. They will not understand that sometimes the voice of God is also in his silence. Your friend you know is going to take ejection. You that is saying no weapon, no sickness. Yourself, you, you are going to take injection. Your friend is soaking Gary. I saw the Christian. You who is a Christian, you are soaking Gary. Your friend is going through pain, hard times, and he's not a Christian. You preach it to your friend that this situation will kill you. Go and serve God. You yourself, you they go through that same situation. So would you die? So there come a time in your life when you you are you you come to the same level with that person who is even a pagan. But don't don't think you are the same with the person. Don't think that God is not working because there is always a stage. But it is in this cave that you can still miss it. You can still jump class. When you find yourself in the cave of Adullam, that is where so many guys will miss it. That is where so many guys will miss it because it is the time when temptation will come to you to jump class. All of a sudden, you are in a relationship with a poor guy. And in the cave of Adulam, so far won't finish you. And the poor guy is the one you should get married to, for example. But because the enemy wants to pervert, wants to track you, wants to take you from that level, they will now bring one guy that does speak. The guy does speak. No structure. He does speak. He buys bends. He will not come and say, I want to get married to you. And because so far don't finish you for the cave. You, you will not forget what God has said. How many times did I get appointment to travel to the US to base there? Ah! I had a son five, four years ago. He wanted to move to the US. He said, Pastor, get me your passport. I am moving to the US with my family. I want to get your visa. I want, to, I want to fight for you so that we are going together. Where I am, there thou shalt be. You can cannot turn Jesus Christ. So. He said, where I am, he said, there thou shalt be. He said, as I speak with you now, pastor, your assignment in Nigeria is over. 
Come and sit here. I like your, your blue. Sit here. Your green. He said, as I speak with you now, your assignment in Nigeria, pastor, is over. So what you do now, get me your passport, get me your information, let me get you a visa, and we are traveling together. The guy, he was very convincing. And I went to pray to God. God, should I travel? Or should I not travel? God did not say nothing. Should I travel? Or should I stay? For we should I travel? Or should I? No signal. A time came, my family gathered and they say, I have for the sit down. I choose the country you want to travel to so that you can start ministry there. And they were very serious. This, you must travel out of this country. Choose the country you like. Let us sponsor you so that you can travel there and start ministry. I said, okay, give me one day. I went to meet God. Should I travel? Sometimes the warning God gives you, God doesn't tell you don't travel. No, so there's a difference between don't travel and if you travel. Two different. They are not the same thing. Should I travel? My son, don't travel. I have a plan for you. It's good. But, Father, should I travel? If you dare step your foot into that airport, you are finished. <laughs> Did I answer the question? In the... <laughs> and I went to meet them. God say, Anna, which God say you should not travel to a place that is good for you? But if you are not careful, you will allow sweetness, sweet thing. They say too, too much sweet thing, they keep. Save our times. A son of mine abroad again came and said, Pastor, I am fighting for you. I am fighting for an interview for you. Your interview date is so so on. The devil strong go. If you are not careful, you might be thinking it's a testimony for you. Praise the Lord. Finally, my brethren, I am traveling abroad. Where God is, God will be saying, Yo, Mumu, you have missed it. Some of the testimonies some of us come here to share is not actually from God. The devil will help you. The devil just helped you and push you away from God. Some of us, you will, you, will, you, you, will, you, will, you will agree with me that it is when you, you are praying for a job, all this why. All this you come to church. You were very serious with church. All of a sudden, but though you are coming to church and you are believing God for a job, all of a sudden, God, a job now came to you, but the job is the type that keeps you away from church. Those things is not of God. Because God will never give you anything that will keep you away from Him. Then when I became very serious with God in, Niger in Wari first in Nigeria, in Wari, jobs were coming for me. But did you know where the job was coming from? Lagos, Portacot, Ondo, Akure. I said, where did you do Wari here? God, if you are the one giving me this job, where did it happen for worry here? The devil knows that once you leave the place of your covering, you are finished. So the devil will always make sure that he brings things your way that will take you away from your covering. But I was sensitive enough. And the job, they pay well. Good pay, good amount. But I said, no, my salvation is more important to me. My covering is more important to me. So I'm not going to leave the place of my covering because a, a job pays one thing. How much the job they pay? If you are not careful. So it, the cave of Adolam is the place of humbling. It humbles you. You think you have healing anointing. One day you will lay hand on headache. Headache will not go. You think you know how to prophesy. You are a prophet. You know why I don't call myself that name. I will never, never. Pastor, simple pastor, pastor. My mother to tomorrow she will be calling me in my community. Where I go, I did, I don't, they, they, you know what they call me? In my community, where will they go this, this year? They call me prophet. And they call me for my house, they shake. Phew. They'll say, prophet, what I, this, this is morning. What is God saying this morning before we go to afternoon? 
Because afternoon time, I will go and ask you, say, what is God talking in the afternoon? So God must say something in the morning, afternoon, and say, so, my prophet, what is God saying now? No, 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 no. Just tell me now so I can run with it. And you know that it is the grace of God you depend on. Ah, ah, haven't I told you? I went to do a crusade in my community. After I finished, a man was so over, overwhelmed, a big boy. He now said he wants to take me to a bigger boy. But before he took me there, he has already said so much about me to the guy. He said, this guy, as he looks at you, he prophesies. As he looks at you, with his eyes closed or open, he will tell you everything. You will be shocked. I never knew he has said that about me already. He now told me there is somebody he would like me to pray for. They will not tell you, come and prophesy you. They say, come and they will just put you for, for, the, for the problem. And they will leave you there. When I entered the man's house, the house was glowing. I entered, the guy was with his boys. The guy is a young guy, but older than me anyway. He was putting on nika. Big boy. He was with his guys, they were talking. When I came, his guys now left him. Remaining me, the, the man that brought me, and him. He now told the man with Igbo. He said, I don't believe all these prophets and all these pastors. Who. He said, but if he can tell me what I am currently going through, the particular problem, I will believe he's a prophet. I say, hey, this guy has put me into a problem. Because I never, God no show me sha, sha, I no see. As for speaking, I was speaking to someone under my breath. Father, show me. He got up on her. Show me. For where? Everywhere dry, dry. The man was not saying, he was not saying, this is my pastor, this is my prophet. <laughs> he, will, he will tell you now. I, I'm a moment I was like, stop all this thing you are doing. Don't, don't put me for a problem. I don't know if I see anything, no. He said, he will tell you now. He will tell you, you not tell me. Yeah. Pastor Kish. I said, sure. See my first prophecy. You. He did, the man did not just say, prophesy to me. That would have been easy. But tell me that particular thing. Not just say any, any random thing. That particular one that is the issue of my life now. If you can tell me now. I will know that. Hey! I didn't know what to do. I was waiting for God. God is not saying anything. And I, and I said, yes, no problem. Um, we're outside. I said, can we enter in? Can we go inside? Can we go inside? He said, okay, inside. No problem, no problem. Let's go inside. As we go inside, I was, I was praying. Father, before I enter that door, tell me something. I was just taking my time. Not that we could, I could not talk to him there. But I wanted, I, maybe God need time to talk to me. So the distance from where we were to the house, very close, but to me, it became the longest distance. But then, Father, give it to me. Rabba, ba, ba, ba. Tell me, oh God, what is it about him? Tell me. For where? Everywhere was blank. I wasn't seeing anything. When I entered the house, he sat down. Bam. He said, Uh huh. <laughs> Go on, I'm hearing you, sir. He now spoke in Hebrew. Say, you say this, your guys prophet can see. The man was saying, yes now. Nah. Oh my God. If he talks to you here, yeah, you will. Hey God. Where are that? God. Yeah, grand. They make a just say. Me, me, me never just take like me they go on jail. <laughs> Something should just happen. And as we did the priest, I was saying, God help me, help me. And I said, tell me what is the issue. Tell me. And I saw a letter. M. See this God here. God does not, God does not see. God does not disappoint men who depends on him. If you are a man and your dependence is on God, God will always make a way. There will say where God makes way for people who depend on him. You know that you, you are incapacitated. You know you are not. You, are, you, are, you cannot do anything on your own. And you depend on God that, hey, God, help me. If you don't help me, I know I, I don't have any ability. I cannot say anything. And I told the guy. And the guy was like, and I, told, I said, and I told him, I said, I see a M. You deal on K. 
car business, you have a business. The first name of the, the business is written M and it's in the US. The guy goes like this. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Go on, uh huh. And the major car you deal on is Benz. You sell Benz. You sell for men. Now look together. You say, uh huh. Go on, go on. And your wife has not been able to put to bed. You say, bam! Bam. This your guy is a true. I might cut on down. <laughs> Only see, but see, God never disappoints. The Bible said he is not slack concerning his promises. Go to the book. Hurry, hurry. Zabalada Gadom Beledesh. Second Peter. 39. Now look here. He said, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Huh? He said, As some men count slackness. Some men, they think God is too slack. God is too slow. But God is now saying, I am not slack, neither am I slow. He said, As some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God no slack. He no slack. He no slack. So, it's a, it's a cave of humbling. If you are here and you are, enjo- and you are, enjoying, you are enjoying any form of privilege, make it no, make it no enter your head. Things rise and fall. If you are enjoying any form of privilege, make it no enter your head. If you are in a place where you are getting resources at ease, make it no enter your head. Don't be too quick to judge people. If you are a girl here and your problem is that you are are having issues with guys disturbing you, there are too many. You want to do away with some. Your friend that people only say hi once in a year, don't laugh at her. You that have so many, many guys around you, now only one guy you go still marry. Abby? You do marry all of them. So what is your problem? Why do you think you are too much? It's a place of humbling. And it's also a place to discover mission. It's a place of mission discovery. The cave of Adolam. You, You come there to discover the how. The how to go about what God has said to you. Some of us now, God has said, your, your place is in KOH. But you have not pressed to discover what God has assigned you to do here. It is what God has assigned you to do here that we make for the results that you should see. Not just coming to church. Some of us, what we do, we just come to church and sit down and go, go, go back to the house. We have not just fixed ourselves up in a, in a place, in a department. There is something that God wants you to do until you begin to do that thing, that which is the mission. So in the cave of Abdullah, you will not begin to discover what are the things that are obtainable? What should I do? What should I not do? Where must I go? Where must I not go? Hallelujah. Separated. You are separated when you are in the mission. In the mission, you are completely separated. The Bible said in the book of Galatians chapter 1, go there. Galatians 1 15. The Bible said it, when it pleases God to separate me from my mother's womb, huh? that I should preach him to the hidden. He said, when I heard that confirmation, I did not confer with flesh or he said, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb. Now, anybody who read this scripture will be thinking, separated from meaning the mother gave birth to, successfully gave birth to Paul. No! Meaning separated from all that came from the womb. When you are in that cave, you are separated from all. So whatever instruction you were given to in that cave, you are meant to run with it, not minding anybody that came from this womb or the womb himself. Brother is not there. Sister should not be there. Uncle, auntie should not be there. The next verse. When I heard, when I, when, when I know, he said, to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the hidden. 
What happened? He said, immediately, I conferred not with flesh and blood. When I don't hear, say, God, say, I'll do this particular thing. I didn't need anybody to tell me how or what to do again. I, I went straight. I did not look for somebody to tell me how to. Some of you, you want to take decision. You are standing in the fence. You are neither here or there. Hey, should I or should I not? Or should I do this thing? Oh, God. Yeah. You know what I mean, somebody? Should I really do it like this? And God has already spoken to you. God did not meet that person to tell you. God jumped that person and came to tell you. Why are you now going to the person? The Bible said we are the circumcision. Ah! Philippians 3.3 3. We are the circumcision. We are the circumcision. And we, we, we have no value. We have no... I know how, did, how did the Bible put it? Go there. Philippians 3.3 3. He said, For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. We have no confidence in the flesh. Many of you, your confidence is buried in flesh. That is why always you get disappointed by flesh. You bury your confidence in that your uncle. Your confidence is in that your husband, that your mom, that your father. That's your auntie. Because maybe more than one or two times, two occasions, they have made promises to you and they fulfilled it. He said, my confidence is not in flesh. My confidence is in God. It's in God. It is just the only thing I do. I press forward towards the mark. I let go of everything behind me. I don't allow myself to be distracted. And the other one is, the cave of Adolam, it attracts the opposite of what you want. <laughs> Listen to me. When you are in this cave, it is always the opposite of what you want that it attracts. When David was in this cave, David was looking for shelter. He was looking for help from men. He was looking for money. But when David was in this cave, it was people who were depressed. People who needed the same thing he needed that came to him. They came to him and they dwell with him in the cave. You are going through pain. There is no money anywhere. Somebody's coming to meet you. I beg you. I feel, I feel, I feel like I won't care from your hand. And you are telling God, Father, I, 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 I don't even get five naira for anywhere. People who want the same thing you want are, are coming under your covering. And you are asking yourself, what do I have to help these people? But it is now time to build structure. Spiritual structure that will last. Because when God sends those people your way, God sends those people your way with a mindset that later these people will be the ones that will hold your hands up. So there is something from me to them. You might be thinking you don't have anything. But the reason why God sent that person to you is because there is something you really have to offer to that person. David didn't have money to offer to them. David didn't have food. But David had spiritual structure hidden in him. He had to bring it out. They told David, be our captain. Be our ruler. We will follow your guide. We will do what you say. Teach us the ways of the spirits. Teach us the way of priesthood. Teach us how to pray. That is why the disciples went to Jesus and they said, Master, teach us how to pray. Because they discover, they will say, wait, this man prays. They will see what this man prays that best results. So if we can start praying like this man, there are things that will begin to happen in our lives. So Jesus, teach us how to pray. David taught men priesthood in the cave of Adullam. Taught men how to stand in war. Taught men how to fight and conquer battles. The Bible says he's the one that teaches our fingers to fight. David allowed himself to be used by God to teach men how to make war in the spirit. Did you know David is a mighty man? Huh? Did you know David never got injured or killed in any battle? Did David die in any battle? Should I shock you? Tell me, shock me. Tell me, thank you. Okay, because this shock, I want to shock you. 
is a shocker thief. Did you know? <laughs> David is a mighty man of war. Only David the king 1000. How many of you are aware? That only at the mention of the name of David, people they, they, they shake. How many of you are aware? Should I shock you? Oh. Did you know? That hey. did you know that David would have died in war? But somebody saved him from dying. I'm not if you know yet. David would have been killed, but he was somebody saved him. Do you know who saved him? The same people that he taught priesthood in the cave of Adullam. You heard me talk about structure. If David had not set up the right structure in the cave of Adullam, he would have died. He would have died well. If he had not set up structure in the cave of Adullam, David would have died well in battle. It is the same people he taught priesthood that saved him. Do not joke when you are in the cave of Adullam. Take advantage of it because the cave of Adullam, it will save you. It will make your voice not to go down. It will make you stand the test of time because you alone cannot do it. You need backup. If you watch Hollywood, when FBI, they encounter situation, when they pick up that they are walking, talking, what do you hear them say? Back up, back up, man. Back up, and you see people coming. Win, win, win. All the dust that I want is win, one, win, one, win, one. Like uh, Second Samuel, First Samuel, Second Samuel, twenty-two. Kapa tamina kato son to kete. The land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. Those that sat in darkness, they have seen what? A great light. Man becomes light to a generation. So once man phases out, it is said that a generational light has phased out. That means a generation will be in darkness if their light if anything should temper with their light. Second Samuel chapter 21. You in the midst of the 21 from verse 12. He who dwells. He who dwells from verse 15. He who dwells. Said, Moreover, the Philistines had yet war against with Israel. And David looked up, and David went down, and his servants with him, and fought against the Philistines. And David did what? Mighty man of what? Go to the next verse. He waxed faint. And Ishbi Benob, which was of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass in weight he being guided with a new sword thought to have slain who David weak David could not fight again the guy, the giant carried his sword, he won't call kill David your David that you are singing he killed 10 times, would have been no more but see what saved David Adolam, I say David. Go on. But Abishai, the son of Zeruah, succored him and smote the Philistine and killed him. Then the men of David swore unto him, saying, Thou shalt not no more, thou shalt no more go out with us to battle, that thou quench not the light of Israel.
you're not going to go fight with us again, no. This is a man. What did I say earlier when if you were here? Men rise and do what? As great as David, if he had not had an encounter, if he had not gone into the cave of Adolam to raise men, he would not have been saved. He would have been slain here. He would have been killed. Let me tell you, nobody's a superstar in this in this in this realm. We don't have any superstar. They got there, they will say, we they swear, they swear an oath. You will never follow us to battle again. Because anything we do you, our light turn off. Anything touches you, our light. Haven't you watched Hollywood war film before? When the leader dies, what happens to the rest? They fall back. Why would they fall back? Is, is their leader the one fighting everybody? No. But their leader is their light. Their leader is their light. Is the light they see. That's why the Bible says the land of Zebulon, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. He said those that sat in darkness, they have seen a great light. But if anything should touch that light, that generation will face away. Do you know why there's some poor? They are poor and poor and poor and poor and that they get poor and they die poor. Some of them is because the one that bear their light died. Pray. Because nobody becomes rich from heaven. It is the same man. Man. M-A-N. Man. That will connect you to riches. So if the person bearing that light is tempered with the, the, some of you going through much battles is because you are you are you are the light to a generation the reason why you are going through many many battles is not because you are too fine it's not because you are too anointed it's because in the realm of the spirit you are the light to a generation so the devil is attacking you from everywhere because the devil knows if anything that should touch you and happen to you that generation will be useless if imagine if something had happened to Moses, don't think your life as a Christian is it will end with you. If that's what you are thinking, you have you are you have made yourself a lie. Your work in God will not just will not end with you. A generation will pick it up. So you should be working with God, having the mindset of I am I am preserving a generation. I am the light to a generation. I am the light to a generation. Don't give, don't hey, look at me. Don't give your light to, to filthy luxury. Don't take your life and hand it over a, 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 a marine girl. Don't take your light and hand over a guy. Samson was the light of Israel and he carried the light and handed it over Delilah be careful don't think what you are doing now you are enjoying yourself you are giving your light the light meant for a generation you are giving it to her lot. you are giving it to death. This is David. David. He would have been killed. But based on the fact that he took time to build men up in the cave of Abdullah. The men he taught priesthood were the ones that shielded him. If I should ask some of you now, how many of you pray for your pastor here? Yeah.